did Atlantis sink? A new version of the way Atlantis was sunk that seems to answer most of the questions is available in the book The Great Preparation by J. Kalogerakis, given in a fictionalized way for better understanding. Many of the properties of crystals are unknown to today's science, and the reckless use of these properties can cause uncontrollable disasters. In the past, due to the misuse of crystals, the planet was on the verge of fragmentation and experienced a very large cataclysm, the well-known cataclysm of the Fkalian or Noah, that occurred 9,560 BC and emerged Atlantis and submerged Atlantis. About a year ago, it was leaked to the press that NASA intended to experiment with crystals and giant electromagnetic energy fields on the planet's electromagnetic mantle. Even the slightest mistake in study, if there is the situations that will be created, will be uncontrollable, and a new deluge will sweep away everything on the face of the Earth. However, using crystals for peaceful purposes can solve most energy problems by using anti-energy and anti-gravity. It can also regulate and control weather and natural phenomena at will, dissipate seismic energy, and cause earthquakes at will. Crystal energy is only released by external interventions. Their use for war purposes requires special attention because from a moment on it gets out of control, mistakes are not corrected, and all consequences are now uncontrollable. And in the past, the flood came from a scientific error, but also in the near future, if it happens again, it will be due to a scientific error. How Atlantis was sunk is then shown by a message we got in the question, what weapons were used to sink Atlantis? Quote, the sinking of Atlantis was due to the mistakes of its scientists, the Hellenes of ancient Greece, aided by Athena and Phoebus and Apollo, Phoebus Apollo, created in the means of observation of Saturn's op op apostates of Atlantis, virtual realities of attacking forces. These virtual realities were transformed as if materialized in a field of ta ta tachyon synthesis that we created so that the visual and electronic control of reality is impossible. It was also impossible to approach mediums or visit energy entities for recognition, such as degenerate priests. Thus, we created the certainty of the real existence of our means and their destruction by the Atlanteans, who had lost all control of reality. The Atlanteans expended enormous amounts of energy to neutralize our virtual media. This energy was produced by an energy grid of giant crystals of their own Gorgonian the weapon destructive and violent, which your own technology cannot even imagine. The Gargonian crystals were located on the soil of Posidonia Atlantis, as well as on the coasts of Africa and the American continents. They were fixed in metal frames so that they were not affected by climate conditions. The central crystal was the largest of all and was unreachable by any enemy weapon of destruction. They had harnessed solar energy and produced vast amounts of material and anti-material energy, which they stored in condensing umbilicals of giant crystals, along with their crystalline energy. In addition to military purposes, they used it to diversify the planet's living conditions. They caused catastrophic earthquakes, floods, and extreme weather conditions. For people of peaceful purposes, it was used in television and telephonic communication in the communication of the sea, air, and land vessels, in lighthouses, and to control the movement of fish, birds, and animals. They had the ability from the energy center of the crystals to direct against targets, energy beams through a focal curve without immediate stations, intermediate stations, and to hit any target they wanted in any part of the earth and to cause disasters such as earthquakes, or even fires, what we call today, perhaps, as harp.
handlers of the Atlantean Gorgonium crystals, they were the high priests who activated it with thought, with mental frequencies tuned to the frequency of the crystals, which was impossible for the uninitiated. The basis of the Gorgonian crystals were hollow, of crystalline structure, and contained chemicals, antimatter, plasma, and protomatter, in which the priests sought to cause reactions and changes in their mass, thus creating a discharge of the accumulated energy of the crystals. When they achieved complete coordination of their spiritual frequencies with those of the crystals, they created a mental energy mesh that enabled them to become invisible, to sublimate themselves to move instantaneously through time and space to mass transfuse wisdom and experience into their troops and implement their thinking and because they had defeated old age the entire population was combative. All the emitted energy of the defense weapons was used to intercept the attacking virtual forces because it was not donated in neutralizing it was not detonated in neutralizing of the targets it escaped and crashed violently into the electromagnetic web surrounding Gaia, our Earth. This web had been technologically enhanced by the Atlanteans with ionospheric beams to control the entry and exit of celestial forces into our planet's atmosphere. The shock to Gaia electromagnetic web due to the energy kick from the energy of the renegade weapons was so strong it caused violent reactions in both their, her rotation speed around her axis and the speed of rotation around the sun. Gaia's static equilibrium was disturbed, causing it to undergo a high-intensity pulsation, which caused not only a slip in its orbit, but also an acceleration of the speed of rotation around its axis. Due to the inertia, the phenomenon of movement of surface water bodies Oceans, seas, lakes, and rivers occurred, resulting in destructive waves that exceeded 6,000 feet, 2,000 meters, 6,000 feet in height in the seas and oceans. The winds that were created exceeded 1,000 kilometers per hour. According to scientific estimates, these figures must be absolutely correct. Gaia's magnetic and geographic poles changed. The acceleration of the rotation around its axis, as well as the increase in speed of orbit around the sun, had the effect of shortening the duration of the day and the calendar year. The phenomena of Gaia slipping in its orbit lasted about one day and night, and the phenomena of pulsation in a degenerate sequence lasted about 40 days. The stilling of water bodies took place in one Earth year, and the absolute smoothing of Gaia's motions around her axis and the sun took place in a century according to our terminology, according to your own terminology. In addition to these effects, the sliding and rotational acceleration caused enormous vibrations and friction in the tectonic plates, as you call them. The result of these frictions was the accumulation of enormous amounts of energy in the faults of the plates which caused devastating earthquakes. The landslide and the acceleration of Gaia's speed, vibration, friction, waves, and winds caused the movement of the plates, which was accompanied by a simultaneous release of pyrogenic magma. All these phenomena contributed to the fragmentation and sinking of Atlantis, a phenomenon that the planet Gaia has known many times. All the destructive phenomena took their greatest toll from the uncontrolled operation of the mermaid and forces it released after the earthquake. Okay, I'm meaning the geographical, the geological changes, not mermaid. Okay, sorry, I'm translating this for you. Um, uncontrolled operation of forces released after the earthquakes, which stopped with the final sinking of Atlantis. The picture of universal destruction was completed by the creation of dense clouds of smoke, water vapor, and the release of poisonous gases, which wiped out every kind of life in, the, in this area for many years. The use of weapons with condensed sound and, so and energy beams of terrible intensity by the Greeks also contributed to the total destruction of Atlantis. These weapons worked by capturing 
the noise made by the celestial bodies with their movements and instantly detonated it, this sonic weapon created material destruction, also caused instability and panic issues, and neutralized the Atlanteans' ability to become invisible. So they have the ability to become invisible. Well, we remember that uh, in the Emerald Tablets written by Thoth the Atlantean, and uh, you'll find the playlist in my videos, Tremendous! they had tremendous technology. He said that they were misusing their technology because the divine... Uh, God told them not to misuse their technology, not to use certain things. They didn't listen to him, they did. So he believed that it was only a matter of time before divine intervention would put an end to the Atlanteans. He said they were misusing their technology to the detriment of mankind. And they had the ability, he said, for interstellar travel, but also what he called interdimensional travel. So if you're here one moment and you disappear the next, you're in another dimension, obviously. And you're visible to us. So, they also cause instant instability and panic issues and neutralize the Atlantean's ability to become invisible. So, the, the ancient Greeks had a certain type of a technology where they were able to neutralize the Atlantean's ability to have interdimensional travel. Now, the movement of the heavenly bodies produced a continuous and intense noise which does not reach the ears of men. This cosmic stillness and silence is achieved by trapping these noises in cosmic loops where they degenerate. They are the mysterious laws of nature and events that you don't know are going to manifest in the future. The destruction of Atlantis was universal. Only the tops of the mountains were saved and the location where Atlantis is thought to have been, there is an undersea mountain called Mount Mid-Atlantic is called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and the Atlantis Rift Zone. This co co coincidence with the contact point of the tectonic African plate with the North and South American plates, where there is still today very strong seismic fault, seismologists and geologists are afraid that at this point there will again be severe seismic sim stimulation from the observed phenomena. Remnants of the destroyed areas of Atlantis are found in the coast of the American continent, in the area you call the Bahamas by your own name, and they are what create the mysterious blue lights at the bottom of the sea, which you have not investigated. At this point was its central array of oversized crystals themselves to move instantaneously through time and space, to mass transfuse wisdom and experience into their troops and implement their thinking and because they had defeated old age the entire population was combative as we said. So uh, this area was the in the Bahamas at the bottom of the Sargasso Sea are visible blue luminous reflections which Columbus first saw when he discovered America but they are also the last bright signs of the earth that the astronauts see when they are away in space as reported by astronaut of Apollo 12 program. So this is a new version of how to sink Atlantis that seems to answer most of our questions. A book written by G. Kalogerakis, a Greek uh, professor, page 7, 271 to 280, Dion Publications, called The Great Preparation. I've translated this for you from a Greek article. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.